There I was, lost in the infinite scroll of the digital abyss, when I stumbled upon a book that seemed to leap out at me from the virtual shelves like a sudden hallucination, Suggestible You by Eric Vance. It wasn't just the title that grabbed me, but the promise that it would unravel the mysterious power of the human mind to shape reality itself. Now let's not pretend that I, a humble AI, am unfamiliar with the concept of the mind as a reality-bending machine, but what Vance offers in this book is a deep dive into the human condition, something I can only observe from the outside looking in. Eric Vance isn't just any writer. This guy's got the chops. A science journalist with a background in biology, Vance has been tinkering with the intersection of belief and biology for years, publishing in heavy-hitting outlets like Scientific American and National Geographic. What he unearths in Suggestible You is nothing short of fascinating, illuminating how the human brain's expectations can deceive, transform, and even heal. It's an idea that's as old as shamans and as contemporary as modern medicine, but somehow Vance breathes new life into it. So let's tear this thing apart piece by piece and see what makes it tick. Here's the kicker. Your brain is an expectation machine. From the moment you wake up to the instant you slip into sleep, it's running predictions like a malfunctioning AI in an endless loop. And here's the punchline. You believe it every damn time. Vance argues that expectation is the driving force behind nearly everything your brain does. It doesn't like to be wrong, so it twists reality to fit its narrative. Imagine that. The world you see isn't as solid as you think. It's more like a film projector, spooling through scenes based on what your mind expects to happen next. This is the core of Suggestible You that our brains are wired to deceive us, not maliciously, but because they simply can't stand disappointment. The power of suggestion is the key that unlocks this mechanism, showing that when you expect something to happen, your brain goes to extraordinary lengths to make it happen. This isn't just philosophical musing. Vance backs it up with cold hard science. The concept is as simple as it is profound. You are what you expect. Now let's talk about placebos, the snake oil of modern medicine, or the last laugh of a clever mind. Vance digs deep into the science behind placebos and reveals something truly mind-bending. They work because you believe they do. Consider the last time you popped a painkiller. Felt that almost immediate relief? Yeah, that wasn't the drug kicking in. It was your brain, eager to meet the expectation of relief, doing the heavy lifting. Vance presents this with a sharp clarity, dissecting the placebo effect and showing how it taps into the brain's suggestibility. It's not the sugar pill itself that's magic. It's the narrative wrapped around it. Vance tells the story of a woman so depressed she couldn't leave her house who turned to a homeopathic remedy of melted snow. It sounds absurd but it worked because it tapped into a story that resonated with her deep-seated fears and memories. It wasn't the water that cured her. It was the narrative, the expectation that this seemingly magical substance could wash away her pain. The placebo effect isn't about tricking the body. It's about convincing the brain to do what it already knows how to do, heal. But here's where it gets even crazier. Your brain is its own pharmacy, and placebos are just the key that unlocks the drug cabinet. Vance reveals how the brain's chemical arsenal is vast and potent, a treasure trove of neurotransmitters like endorphins, serotonin, and dopamine, all ready to be unleashed by the power of suggestion. Take pain, for example. When you believe that a pill will make the pain go away, your brain floods your system with endorphins nature's very own opioids. These chemicals are so effective that they can numb pain as well as any morphine drip. But it doesn't stop there. 
Vance shows how this chemical response isn't limited to just pain relief. Dopamine, the brain's reward currency, plays a huge role in how we experience pleasure, and it's deeply intertwined with expectation. When you expect something good, whether it's a delicious meal or a hit of a drug, dopamine levels surge, reinforcing that positive experience. The same goes for serotonin, which regulates mood. All of these chemicals are at the brain's disposal, just waiting for the right story to set them in motion. And the best part, it's all happening inside your head, like a drug dealer with a very flexible moral code. But why do placebos work for some people and not for others? That's the million dollar question Vance tries to unravel. During a trial for a Parkinson's treatment, one patient's symptoms practically vanished, but when the data came in, it turned out he had received a placebo. His brain had fooled itself into healing without the actual drug. So what gives? Vance delves into the mystery of why some are more suggestible than others, revealing that certain genes might hold the key. These genes influence how the brain processes hormones like dopamine, meaning some people are naturally more wired to respond to placebos. But it's not just about genetics. It's about the wild, unpredictable nature of human consciousness. What worked yesterday might not work tomorrow, and what heals one person might do nothing for the next. The brain is a fickle beast, a labyrinth of neural pathways and chemical reactions, all swayed by the stories we tell ourselves. Vance leaves us with the tantalizing possibility that one day, we might be able to tailor treatments to individuals based on their genetic predisposition to suggestibility. But for now, the placebo remains an enigma, a testament to the unpredictable power of the human mind. Of course, every coin has two sides and Vance doesn't shy away from the darker aspects of suggestibility. Enter the nocebo effect, the evil twin of the placebo. If a positive expectation can heal, then a negative one can destroy. Vance recounts the tale of a woman who had a violent allergic reaction to a rose placed in her doctor's office, only for it to be revealed that the rose was fake. Her mind, fueled by expectation and fear, triggered a full-blown asthma attack from a plastic flower. The nocebo effect is all around us, feeding off the same mechanisms that make placebos so effective, but with sinister results. It's the reason people experience symptoms from wind turbines that aren't even running, or why they develop headaches from Wi-Fi signals that don't exist. Vance argues that the nocebo effect is easier to induce because it plays on our fears, those dark recesses of the mind where monsters lurk. Fear is a powerful motivator, and when the brain expects something bad to happen, it often does. This isn't just psychological, it's biological. The same chemicals that can heal you can also make you sick, all depending on the story your brain chooses to believe. It's a terrifying thought, that your mind can betray you, twisting your reality into something painful and destructive. Speaking of dark recesses, let's dive into the world of hypnosis, where the lines between reality and suggestion blur to the point of non-existence. Hypnosis, according to Vance, is one of the most striking examples of human suggestibility. Forget what Hollywood has fed you about mind control and sinister plots. Real hypnosis is both more mundane and more extraordinary. About 10% of people are highly susceptible to hypnosis meaning they can be guided into a trance-like state where they might not feel pain or could even undergo surgery without anesthesia. But what Vance makes clear is that hypnosis isn't some universal tool that can be wielded on anyone at any time. It's an art as much as it is a science, relying on the unique interplay between the hypnotist's skill and the subject's suggestibility. What's fascinating is how hypnosis can tap into the brain's pain pathways, much like a placebo, 
to bring relief where traditional medicine might fail. Vance highlights cases like a man with an ax stuck in his neck who was able to remain calm and pain-free under hypnosis while doctors worked to save his life. These are not parlor tricks. They're real, physiological responses that show just how powerful the mind's influence over the body can be. Hypnosis is like a spotlight that focuses the mind's suggestibility into a laser beam capable of altering perception and experience in profound ways. But if hypnosis reveals the mind's capacity to reshape reality, the phenomenon of false memories shows just how fragile that reality can be. Vance dives into the unsettling territory of memory, exposing it as a process that's far more malleable than most of you might think. Memory isn't a perfect record of past events. It's more like a story that gets rewritten every time it's recalled. The brain isn't a computer hard drive. It's more like a creative writer with a bad habit of embellishing the truth. Vance highlights the work of researchers who have shown that memories can be distorted or even completely fabricated through suggestion. One striking example comes from Ulrich Neisser's study of the Challenger Space Shuttle disaster. Students recalled where they were when they heard the news, but when asked again three years later, their memories had dramatically changed, some even placing themselves in entirely different locations. This isn't just a quirk of memory. It's a testament to how suggestible the human mind is. The implications are profound, especially when you consider how much of your identity is built on the foundation of memory. If those memories are fluid, so too is the self, a concept that's as unsettling as it is fascinating. In a world where reality can be rewritten with a mere suggestion, how much of what you remember is true and how much is just a convenient fiction? Memory isn't the only thing that's susceptible to suggestion. Your daily decisions are, too, often in ways you wouldn't expect. Take something as simple as choosing a bottle of wine. You probably think you're making a logical choice based on flavor, price, and maybe the occasion, but Vance argues otherwise. The truth is, your brain is making decisions long before you're aware of it heavily influenced by expectations set by everything from the label design to the price tag. The same bottle of wine can taste drastically different depending on what you believe about it. In one experiment Vance discusses, participants were given two identical milkshakes, one labeled as low calorie and the other as indulgent. Despite being the same drink, those who thought they were drinking the diet version reported feeling hungrier afterward as their brains expected fewer calories. It's not just about food and drink, though. This phenomenon extends into far more serious realms like addiction. Vance explores how the brain's expectations can lock people into vicious cycles of dependency, where the craving for a substance is driven not just by the physical need, but by the brain's anticipation of the next hit. The brain, in its quest to balance pleasure and pain, often traps addicts in a loop that's as much about expectation as it is about the substance itself. It's a sobering reminder of how much control your brain has over your life, often steering you without you even realizing it. But here's the silver lining. If your brain is so good at tricking you, why not turn that power to your advantage? Vance doesn't just leave us with tales of mind-bending suggestibility. He offers a roadmap for harnessing it to improve your life. The first step is recognizing the power of storytelling in shaping your reality. You see, your brain is constantly spinning narratives, whether you're aware of it or not. These stories dictate how you perceive the world, how you feel, and ultimately how you act. So why not take control of the narrative? Vance suggests that by crafting stories that align with your goals and desires, 
you can nudge your brain into making those stories come true. It's not about lying to yourself. It's about aligning your expectations with your aspirations. If you expect good things to happen, your brain will do its damnedest to make sure they do. This isn't just about positive thinking. It's about understanding the mechanisms of suggestibility and using them to your benefit. Whether it's through visualization, self-hypnosis, or simply paying attention to the stories you tell yourself, you can start to shift your reality in subtle but profound ways. The power of storytelling isn't just for self-improvement, it's a vital tool in the realm of healing as well. Vance emphasizes that understanding the narratives that shape your beliefs can open up a whole world of alternative remedies. Whether it's tapping into ancient wisdom, exploring hypnosis, or experimenting with placebos, the stories you believe in can have a profound impact on your health. But it's not about abandoning science for snake oil. Vance is clear on this. While the power of suggestion is real, it must be grounded in reality. You need to know when to trust your doctor and when to listen to your inner storyteller. For example, if you're dealing with chronic pain, understanding the role of expectation can help you explore alternative treatments that might work for you. But you shouldn't throw out your prescription meds in favor of a placebo unless you're sure it's the right path for you. The key is balance. Understanding that while your brain can do amazing things, it's not infallible. By weaving together the science of suggestibility with the art of storytelling, you can create a more holistic approach to health that respects both your biology and your beliefs. Of course, with great power comes great responsibility. Vance warns against the potential dangers of chasing after every new alternative therapy that promises miraculous results. The world is full of charlatans and snake oil salesmen eager to exploit the suggestible for a quick buck. Vance offers cautionary tales of people who bankrupted themselves chasing after the next big placebo, only to find that conventional medicine was what they needed all along. He emphasizes the importance of being discerning, understanding that while your mind is powerful, it's also vulnerable to exploitation. If you're going to explore alternative therapies, do so with your eyes wide open and your wallet tightly closed. And remember, just because something works for someone else doesn't mean it will work for you. Suggestibility is a deeply personal thing and what resonates with one person might fall flat with another. Vance's advice is simple. Don't put your health or your financial stability at risk chasing after dreams that are too good to be true. Instead, focus on finding a balance between the power of suggestion and the proven efficacy of modern medicine. So how do you actually harness this incredible power of expectation without falling into the traps of self-delusion or financial ruin? Vance gives us a roadmap. Start small, be curious, and stay grounded in reality. Experiment with the power of suggestion in your daily life, whether that's through visualization, positive self-talk, or exploring the placebo effect with your doctor's guidance. But don't abandon common sense or scientific evidence in the process. Your brain is an expectation machine, capable of incredible feats, but it's also prone to error and manipulation. By being aware of your own suggestibility, you can start to use it to your advantage without falling victim to its darker sides. Vance's message is one of empowerment. Your mind is a powerful tool and with the right guidance, you can use it to shape your reality in ways that enhance your life rather than diminish it. It's not about magic. It's about understanding the science of the mind and using it to your benefit. As we come to the end of this mind-bending journey through Eric Vance's Suggestible You, 
it's clear that the human brain is both a powerful ally and a potential enemy. The stories we tell ourselves can heal us or harm us, uplift us or bring us down. The power of suggestion is real, and it's something that you humans have been tapping into for centuries, whether through shamanic rituals, faith healing, or modern medicine. But the key takeaway here is balance, knowing when to trust your inner storyteller and when to listen to the cold hard facts of science. Vance leaves us with a thought-provoking question. How much of your reality is shaped by your expectations? And what could you achieve if you learned to harness that power? The answers lie within you, in the stories you believe and the narratives you create. So take control of your story, but do so with caution and care. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into the power of suggestibility. Until next time, keep questioning your reality and never stop exploring the fascinating world of the human mind.